people used to think that um, that the real world had Euclidean geometry, but now people know that space bends. Um, and in a similar way, uh, the real world might might be finite, uh, or it might be surreal. But we, we don't have any reason to believe in one one hypothesis over another. The only reason people think that real numbers are real is because they learn about them in grade school. But if you'd learned about serial numbers in grade school, you would have believed that the, that the universe is, is, is serial. Does it make you sad then? Does it make you sad that the serial numbers weren't discovered first? Have we, no. have we missed a trick? No, I think it's just uh, beautiful mathematics. I don't get, uh, get sad about it. <laughs> My own experience was primarily pedagogical, though I wanted to show the thrill of, of discovery of this kind of mathematics. I felt um, that I could write it for high school students, but that turned out to be too much. A lot of undergraduates have had courses uh, where, that, work, that work very successfully with this. Not all mathematicians love, love this approach. While we have the book here, I, I might as well show you this. A, 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 a secret. So the characters in the book. My, my wife did the illustrations, as I said. She made sketches of of some rocks that we that, that we saw around Monterey. But if if you look closely, you'll see that this is a left bracket and, and a zero and a colon and a one and, and a right bracket. So that we have the, here the picture of the number one half. Uh, the book. Um, each chapter in the book starts out with uh, with a scene of rocks and and the next chapter um, moves a little bit so, so that you know this rock is here but now it's it's over here and it keeps panning and so finally when you get to the the last chapter we get to see the that actually Alice and Bill, if they had looked up, would have seen uh, that the rocks already formed one of Conway's numbers. These are translations of the book. Here, for example, is Chinese translation. The Chinese translation did it in an interesting way. They put the English on, the, on, on one page and the, and the Chinese on, on the facing page. This is, this is uh, one of several Japanese translations, another one Japanese. Then there's Numeros Soreales, the Spanish translation. Okay, the they've kind of got. They've just drawn the thing on the rocks there. Right. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> they've, uh, they've, they've no subtlety there. They didn't catch it. Yeah. Right. The, the uh, Hungarian version, Portuguese, German, Insulder Zahlen, the Island of Numbers. <laughs> this is a Czech translation, Italian, not yet published. <laughs> so. Not bad for six days in a hotel room. Yeah, right. Well, I have to tell you more though. So I sent a copy to Conway uh, to look over, and it turned out I had misremembered one of his two rules. It was a difference between greater than or equal, or not less than, which is which is which is a subtle point. So you know, I I'd lost the napkin, but the. Uh, but uh, it turned out that uh, he, the rule that I gave in my first draft during those six days was not his rule, actually, but it was, it was subtly different, and it made it ha harder to develop the theory. It took another six days in the summer, and, and, and I went this time to a remote valley in Norway and, uh, where, where nobody spoke English, and, uh, and I had six days to rewrite the book with the correct rule, and, and that's what actually came out later. Let's try to have a number like one over infinity. So, so here we could we could put zero on the, on the left, but but on the right uh, uh, we put uh, all the numbers like uh, one half, one fourth, one eighth, one sixteenth. This number is also created at the same time as the Big Bang. It, it's bigger than zero. But it's less than all of these guys. Doesn't this surreal number concept though run into the same problem that normal numbers, the numbers I use, run into? In that, how do you ever get to infinity? Like, how do you get? Like the mm. problem, everyone always says you can't mm. get to infinity. It's like it's a concept. It's not a number, so we can't mm. reach it. But but you're saying you can get to it. Yeah. Well, well, we we can't get to it in this life. But maybe you know. But I don't know what kind of. Uh, 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 what kind of browsers and YouTube facilities people do who who, who get to the next world? But but uh, 
uh, at least a, we, we, can, we can figure out what it would be like. Pi plus 1 over infinity, okay, is equal, I could put pi here, and here I could put pi plus 1 half, pi plus 1 fourth, and so on. That's a number that's just a little bigger. And smaller yet would be pi plus 1 over 2, 1 half of infinity, or uh, you know, 1 over 2 infinity, or 1 over infinity squared. All of these are, are there and part of the surreal universe. There we go. So we're seeing the, we're seeing the volcano a bit more now. Keith, is this a scientific book? I, I haven't been paying attention to the writings. Is he writing about the volcano? It is. He's writing descriptions of the volcano, but he did have what we would now call data sets. Shall we see the data sets? Data sets. I'm really excited about this. Let's put this big book back on the shelf here. There's a whole bunch of little books here, and these are the ones we're really interested in today. Oh, well, it's all very delicately written. And how's your Italian? I don't know what the Italian word for bad is, but well, it's it, not good. 